From Sierra Nevada Brewing Company comes a wild new creation with a hint of guava, strawberry, and hibiscus, and a crazed, ludicrous, absolutely maniacal amount of slightly sour. From the nefarious minds who brought you Hazy Little Thing comes something curiously new, a devilishly drinkable delight to bring your taste buds to life. It's alive! Wild Little Thing, slightly sour egg. Are you curious? Hi, this is John Vanderslice. And this is No Place Like Home, presented by Noise Pop. And we have with us Tierney Tough. Tierney, how are you? I'm terrified. How are you? Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> this. It, I th I'm at home being terrified. So yeah, I mean, there's a there's a uh, a narrative. Whatever the narrator of my life is, it's like a horror movie. So I'm I'm at home being uh, anxious and nervous. And it probably, I think it's good. Like, think when this is over, you'll be so relieved, right? I think so, too. And I, and I have to say thank you so much for inviting me to do this, because I probably wouldn't have done it on my own. Um, so you've definitely, like, added some courage to my life that I, I kind of needed. <laughs> Hell yeah. I feel yeah. a lot braver uh, because you've asked me to do this um, terrifying thing. So thank you so much. <laughs> well, it's your, I mean, you're great on stage. I've seen you play many times and we've sang on stage many times together. So many. And, yeah. and the, there is something kind of alienating about being like COVID times. Uh, everyone's on this, this like uh, live streaming shit and it, it will, uh, it will mess you up. Yeah. And this is like the first time I've used Zoom this whole week. So I've, yeah. I've avoided Zoom. I've avoided live streams. I've avoided like wearing real pants. It's just yes. it's been incredible. So I'm I'm happy to join the 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 rest of the world. I don't I if Zoom if joining Zoom is joining the rest of the world, <laughs> we need to jump off a cliff and end this now. I mean I think so. <laughs> we're, we're like, <laughs> all right. So t tell us a bit like like so you like have like created this set specifically for this night. This is special. We're gonna hear new songs, right? Tell us what we're gonna hear. Yeah, I mean it's pretty much Everything that I've kind of been uh, concocting in my bedroom alone um, during my God, is that time. Arrow? Can we just look? Everyone yeah. needs to notice Arrow. Can you bring Arrow? Bring Arrow to the camera. Arrow, come oh. on. Listen, Kevin told us that people love pets. We got to we got to play the people okay. here. That's all we got. I, I'm gonna drug my cats and just like put them right in front of the screen. I love Arrow so much. I've spent we 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 went. I went to to Cape Canaveral uh, seashore with with Arrow and Tyranny last time I was on tour. She does play the piano. Let's hear it. Some Scriabin shit she up in likes, here. She uh, likes Penderecki. <laughs> yes, these are um, dog chords. <laughs> <laughs> um, she absolutely hates this. So, but this is, is she just the best? Yeah, but don't you think this is what like a like a trumper thinks the left is doing with their <laughs> like with their knights, right? With a purple, time. you know, like a dude in a pink shirt, like crop top t-shirt, and then uh, someone in a purple some... room play having a dog play piano, don't you think? Yeah, some emo girl that looks like Daria. Yeah. yeah. That's forcing her dog to play piano. I mean, I don't think it's the worst thing. Uh, oh, there was something, there was a message that just came through in the chat that was probably like, dude, you need to hurry this shit up because, like, <laughs> you're killing the vibe. <laughs> hey, oh, let's... no, I think it's a good message. It says, you guys are doing amazing job. This is the most, the best show I've ever seen. <laughs> Don't um... kill my vibe. Listen, I fucking, <laughs> I, Tierney, how much do you love noise pop people? Everyone we got, we got the fucking crew. We got Kevin. Yeah. We got Scott. We got Andrew. We got everyone up in here. We got Dan. Roan, man, thank you so much for helping me with all this AV stuff. I honestly... I know. It, we would have died. Wouldn't have been able to do this. So, um, yeah, th the staff is is killer. I, I really, really love them. And I actually did play Noise Pop, I remembered, like, years ago um, on a tour. I think we played Rickshaw Stop. And it was, it was super organized as well. I remember it being really fun. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Hey, we got d donation prizes, right? So if everyone, uh, 
uh, if everyone like uh, I get fifty dollars, if you donate fifty dollars or more, you can win one of four. And then the, the chat cut off because it's only like <laughs> giving me like like you gotta love Zoom. Like everything is wrong about using Zoom. It's like um, okay, I'm reading it now. Oh hell yeah! Oh, uh, every donation of twenty dollars, five dollars or more is uh, is entered to win a pair of tickets to a future show at the Lost Church when in real life is back and it is going to fucking come back everyone um if you donate 50 dollars or more you win one of four lost uh, church t-shirts and tierney have you been to the lost church before in san francisco i haven't but you you've told me about it and i've seen pictures and it, it looks like it looks like the perfect place to play in this kind of setting it's so it's the listening room. It's like probably 80 yeah. cap. Hopefully I got that right. It's a beautiful room. I've played there many times. It's like you will have a show there that you will not have in any other venue. That's why venues are so special that they create their, they are their own. Um, it's, they, they are part of the show and they create a different show. And I just think you would adore that room. And we need to do, we need to keep these venues open because if we come back to a dystopian uh, fucking like 2021 with Trump as our president and there's no venues. I'm, I'm out of here, man. Or if there's I'm only like, you. you know, AEG type venues, you know, like, yeah, then we're, we're, we're doomed. Yeah. I, I was talking about this with my friend. Um, I, I worked at a venue in Orlando called Will's pub for yeah, about great, eight, great eight great years. Place. Yeah. And it's kind of sounds, it sounds very similar where it's like, it's just a 200 cap room and it's like the local, watering hole you know and like without that venue and um in my life like i i honestly wouldn't be doing what i'm doing now because they just like they just gave you so much knowledge and access to be able to learn how to perform and you know open for a bigger yeah. band or, or whatever like it was just kind of like an anything goes kind of place and you wouldn't have that without these small venues so i'm i'm so happy to be involved in this because I, I i just care so much about this issue so um hell yeah. yeah it's so important um yeah it's it's important this is what we do with our life with our life and our, our lives were yeah. radicalized by seeing bands play when yeah. we were growing up and you and i are not able to play at these you know bigger venues if that's all that's left it's the arenas and stuff like that so there's got to be something what if it's just 30 seconds to mars every night and that's that's what we get or 100 seconds as many seconds uh, as we can get from Mars, I'll take. As long as Jared Leto is the front person of the band. Can I tell uh, you a story about this? Yes. Okay. Yes. So they played uh, in Orlando, like right when they were getting started. Oh, I, this is like, this is kind of like borderline shit talking. Do um, it. Bring it, man. What what do we got? Come on. What do what we um, got to lose? So they, I, they had like a big outdoor <clears throat> show and it was like a big deal because it, it was Jared Leto. Um, and there was all these signs like saying Jared Leto won't perform if you advertise the show as Jared Leto from My So Called Life or like any of his <laughs> acting stuff. He will not perform. And if you say anything about it, he won't go out on stage or whatever. So that's exactly what happened. And he did not oh. play. Oh, yeah. oh my God. What a baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh a, my. A beautiful baby. Jared he Leto. It. He knows it. Yeah, he's not my type. No, he's not my type either. But right, I don't think he's your type at all. No, I, I, I th but that is such psycho behavior. Mm -hmm. Like, think about how like things. Like, first off, if you're that famous, you're going to be roughed up. I mean, could you imagine reading the press after like, like you, did you see him in, in Blade Runner twenty forty nine? It was like one of the worst <laughs> fucking performances I've like literally ever. First off, we're living Blade Runner twenty forty nine, but I I'm know. just glad that, that like Jared Leto isn't like masterminding all this shit from some basement, some fake uh, phony ass basement, you know. Also, it's like impossible to rid yourself of this attachment of of acting. You know, it's like yeah, why why do you care? Like yeah. don't don't put attention on it, and then it won't. You know, like shut up. Yeah, you, but listen. If you if you started my, my so-called, wouldn't you be like, "Fuck yeah, man! That's like this is on my resume. I'm so yes. proud of this stuff, right?" Totally. I mean, yeah. okay, Tierney, tell us what you're going. I'm so excited for you to play. We I talked feel like way I'm too, too long much. about Jared well, Leto. Well, I've talked too much. You, you're great. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is all kind of stuff that's just been you know happening in my head and. Um, I, I'm kind of holed up here in Gainesville. Um, I took over, we have a family run Airbnb 
situation and uh, I kind of took over it because it wasn't being used and yeah. uh, made like a little bedroom studio. Um, and I've just been holed up here and it's, it's a lot more, um, it's a little less chaotic here than in Orlando. And, uh, honestly it was just time for a change, you know? So, uh, just been like, we're, we're working on our, uh, pauses are working on our third album. So awesome. But been doing that, you know, um, just all music. So it's kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, um, I actually want to dedicate my set tonight to, uh, the Morgan Robbins family who are kind of going through a tough time right now. Uh, and I, I wrote a, like a little piano instrumental piece, um, for their son, Cal and hell uh, yeah, we I love wrote, Cal. Yes. He's such a wonderful kid. And, um, I, I wrote this thing in the middle of the night and that's why it's called Insomniano. <laughs> But it's just a little instrumental piece uh, I wrote for him, and I'm going to try not to uh, be too nervous while I'm playing it. <clears throat> Janet and Kelly. Oh, yeah. Me too. It's for them. Oh, that's my, my faux classical piece. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Some uh, inspiration from Arrow went into that, I think, just sitting by me. <laughs> um, so you, you do this every week. How do you, how does this um, fare, you know, with, with your regular IG show? Well, it's, it, this is like a lot scarier for me just because I, it's like, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like I, I, the, the regular, well, I do four hours a week, which sounds completely psycho now that I say it out loud, but um, I just have such control over that. I'm just so used. I, I've had like so many technical problems that I have had tried to figure out doing that. And now I'm bringing all of those technical problems into Andrew and Scott's world. And I feel <laughs> guilty for that, but uh, like, yeah, if I, if we get through this tonight, I'll, I'll be, I'll be stoked. Well, I think they're probably, you know, used to all these problems by now. It sounds like they've oh, been yeah, working so with good. a lot of different systems and yeah. pretty, pretty good at, at uh, problem solving. Yeah. Um, whew, man, this is, this is terrifying. <laughs> oh, you're going to kill it. But give us another song. I want I, right. I want to hear stuff. I'm stoked. So I, I'm trying not to do like VH1 behind the music, but um, I guess it it maybe will serve the show if I give context a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I've had this Mr. Rogers song stuck in my head for so many years, um, and it's called the, the Days of the Week. Um, It's exactly what it sounds like. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and it's like an earworm. I just cannot get it out of my head because it's just so sweet. And um, I, I kind of like, 
I guess subconsciously wrote the antithesis of that song. <laughs> so it's like all the things, because the song's about like all the things you can do within a week, week's time. So yeah. this was like, of course, I put a negative spin on it with all the things like you can't do because I got like writer's block or whatever. So um, I feel like I should have candles and like a gargoyle or something while I'm explaining all this. <laughs> <laughs> you need a set designer, man. That's what you need. I know. I saw. Uh, I accidentally saw Godsmack once, and yeah. Oh, twice. Sorry, twice. Uh, and they had gargoyles and damn um, throw rugs and candles and a um, rotating drum stage. Damn. What it would was, you? That's what you get for a sixty dollars a stadium show, right? I didn't pay for it. it was an oh, accident. I know you didn't. I know you did not pay sixty dollars for Godsmack. I went to see Pantera actually when I was younger and uh, happened to, you know, get there early and the, the, the smack was on. Good old smack. <laughs> is this I, that, that feels like, no, this isn't, I mean, it's not your fault. It's just, we're, 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 we're uh, yes, it's great content. Let me just, <laughs> let, me, let me pull this back. Are we, uh, are we, are we? Have you raised a million dollars? Every yet? we have we have a million dollars, and everyone there's like everyone we've we're changing the course of human <laughs> history by doing this. Slash, like everything is good, <laughs> everything else. And I know what I know what you're fighting. You have this feeling that everything is wrong because that's what you get when you're performing into a camera. I do it all the time. I'm I'm now have transcended that feeling of dread, and I live for that feeling of dread but like yeah. i totally get it the first time you do one of these things it's so silent like like yes. when i when i do these alone there's no one to banter like thank god that we have each other but it's like literally yeah. it's like you're on a fucking island right um right because we're so used to hopefully an applause <laughs> yeah you know hey we got 800 bucks and uh, 600 oh, wow. yeah we got 800 bucks in the uh, donations come on we're killing it you're it must killing have been the uh, the jared leto talk it was jared leto plus arrow you think jared leto donated he definitely is not <laughs> watching this live stream <laughs> he's watching himself somewhere yeah he's look, probably looking at himself in did you say licking or looking I said looking, but it's better if he's licking himself on a mirror. mirror. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Now I've got this image. All right.
Hell yes. This is so scary. That was incredible. Oh, thanks. I just Tear made that uh, Tear little me. drum beat uh, this week, and, and Rowan was so nice to um, help me make sure it goes through all this stuff. <laughs> I, I, I know that the, the, the technical help on, on, on their side has been like really amazing. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess I should talk about what is going on. Um, yes. In a, in a couple weeks, uh, my band, uh, Pauses, has our first ever Record Store Day release. So um, we've did this, uh, it's a split seven inch with The Good Life. Um, with That's amazing awesome. Tim yeah, Kasher. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're so great. Um, and we both, each side is a different breeder's cover. So um, they did this really great version of Divine Hammer. It's so good. Um, and then we did a, a version of Off You, which is my favorite breeder song. Cool. <clears throat> we did like a, a rockin' version, I guess. Uh, so that comes out in a couple weeks. Um, and then I think that's... I don't know what else is going to happen. I'm, I've, I've kind of just been trying to work on projects here and there, not all music stuff. Yeah. Um, I've been slowly restoring my Rhodes piano with my dad, and uh, it's been really, really exciting for me because it's something and I now you, to do. And now you know everything about like Rhodes like manufacturing, right? <laughs> like I see the photos you put up. It's incredible. Yeah, so mine's actually post-Fender, um, and it's kind of like... As soon as we opened it up, this is all going to get really nerdy. Um, it was kind of Frankenstein. It had like some different harp pieces to it. Um, so I had to buy different things that would normally not go with that, you know, uh, brand or model or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and kind of figure it out as we kept opening it up and deconstructing it. So. It's been very exciting. It's all stuff you can do on your own. It's just very, very tedious. Yeah. So um, the cool thing is, as soon as we pulled the harp out, there was a signature um, from the last person that you restored it or updated it, did yeah. something to it, um, from 1992. And it had its wow. name on it. So um, that's how I knew. And I also knew it hadn't been touched because it was just disgusting, like <laughs> full of stuff down there. So. Cleaned it all out, um, and then um, we've been like replacing re replacing all of the bushings and all of the felts in the. Keys. That's like really hard to do, actually. That, yeah, that's... you have to be really careful about yeah. um, not expanding the wood. And um, I'm gonna turn this re reverb off so I don't sound like a ghost. Um, and uh, placing the felts back in carefully, obviously, but. They're, they're all from 1979, so they're all worn down and they need to be changed. That's, that's awesome. It's exciting because you can take a lot of this stuff to other pianos. A lot of them have yes. the same, similar mechanics. Yeah. So, so that's kind of cool. But, you know, once we're done, um, my dad and I can sign our name on the Hell frame, yeah. which is pretty cute, right? And then you can just, like, mark out that other dude's name. Just, yeah. like, take a big, fat Sharpie and block him out. Whatever, Rob. A race. So -and -so. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the other thing we're going to do, which is going to be a total pain in the, the ace, um, is redo the Tolex on yeah. the, the frame because it's and all And that's like, where it looks so beautiful torn. if you do that. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a deep, it's called deep space. So it's like black with glitter throughout that's it. Sick. And it's going to be so pretty and it's like, it's it's something I've wanted to do for a long time because this is like my favorite thing to play of yeah. all time. Like I yeah. love this Nord, which is great for you know traveling or whatever. But if I could take the roads with me, like there's just nothing like the action on the roads. I know, so, I know. They're so heavy, and we, I actually have toured with the roads, and it's such a pain in the ass because you have to tune it. Yeah, you know, I know. And it, it's not worth it. So. I know. We t we toured with the Whirly, and it's the same shit. You have to bring like a solder. Yeah. You, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, but it sounds so good. Yeah, it can sound really <laughs> good. Um, what else? You know what I'm gonna do tomorrow as a treat to myself? Tell, tell us. I'm gonna make pancakes. Hell yeah! yeah. But that should be every day in COVID times, right? Like, no. what, what else do we have other than these like ridiculous like food food markers? I I've actually I guess it is really unhealthy, good. right? 
I mean, the ones I got are like um, they're they're healthy-ish. They're like protein-based, pea plant-based, or whatever. So yeah, I I I can be like sort of bad, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I've been really I mean, good. I, if I'm you're not- living in in California right now, the the air quality index is like over two or three hundred, depending on where you you live. I know. So you're just like you could you, you don't you're like. Your head is in a different space as far as like what's healthy to put in your body. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're, to everyone. You're breathing like, uh, you know, like, like fucking insulation and shit. Oh, you know? my God. It's it's awful. And I feel like Florida and California are kind of at a, in a race, you know, to see who can be the worst. And I feel Florida like, will win. I mean, it'll always win. <laughs> it's going to win. <laughs> We're, you know, I know. I know you know, but you know why also it doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah, I love Florida. Hey, listen, I defended Florida today. I, w- I went to the beach today. I went to Malibu because I needed to breathe air that was under, uh, you know, 90 uh, AQI. Yeah. And and I was talking to someone and defending. I found myself defending Florida at like 2 p.m. today. So it's a it's an almost daily occurrence. Me too. Every day. But you know what? I totally agree that it does kind of suck. Um, <laughs> well, but the, but the, this but, the, there's a lot of what's wrong with Florida is could easily you could easily say it's like wrong about America. You know, it's not like Florida is some outlier. You know. Yes, but a lo- also a lot of it is like speculation too. It's like a lot of the um, like articles you'll read about like you know like Florida man or like meth yeah. man or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like it's all written by someone who doesn't live here, and it's like this is yeah. the worst. Like you know. But psychos live everywhere in the U. Like exactly. literally everywhere, you know. Exactly. And like, it's terrible everywhere, right? Well, I'm. I, I'm kidding. Yes. Okay. I. <laughs> I, I was going to take that question <laughs> up and try to do something with it, but I, you're, let's withdraw it. I like the one thing I do miss right now is uh, is traveling and like. Yeah. It's all I want to do. I I do love touring. Like. It's I, I've mourned it for the most part. I know it's not coming back. And, you know, what I really like about this time now is I know I only have one focus, so I don't have to worry about like, you know, wearing 20 million yeah. hats and worrying about, all right, we have to go play a show and we have to set up, you know, the sample pad and like we have to do all this logistical stuff to even do this tour or whatever. Like, I don't have to worry about anything else except for this just writing right now, which is. Yeah. been kind of a blessing for me so but i do i do get um i'm a nomad so i, I need to like get out and i do want to travel so bad yep i know me too if you could go anywhere where would you go well so i had a that tour with opening up for not a surf in europe that got canceled yeah. and and it was like the first tour was really fun but we, it was like all of the the really cool shit was on the second one and, and it got rescheduled for next may but i i just think it's not gonna it's just gonna get canceled again this would really? be the third third time it got canceled yeah because i think that like mass gatherings i think that there's going to be even in europe there's going to be start and stop like because of like resurgence and stuff and it just yeah. keeps happening and france is terrible right now like so a lot of these shows are in france and and in in germany and and the netherlands and like i just think that that like i mean that's where like i I mean, when I saw those tour dates, it ends in, in Holland and like, fuck, I would just like stay there for a week in the summer. Yeah. Come on, go to the Concerca Bow. Like, like I have friends that live there, smoke weed, ride bicycles. Like, come on, like y- y- go to, go to the Reichs Museum. Like you can't like there's th- that to me was like, I could, I could, I can endure this, this year, just having something like that. So mm-hmm. I, I would just say ending up in like you know, visiting Rotterdam or Antwerp and, and just that section, that kind of part of Northern Europe to me is really exciting. Yeah. And have they said anything about like um, the living room show cycle stuff? Like how does, how will that work? Will they do maybe like backyard shows or? It's, it's wild. Like I've thought about that so much. I, I, I don't even want to contact Undertow because I'm just, I just don't, I want to just believe that somehow this stuff is going to happen. And I don't want to hear a definite no from them, but it feels like, I just think that like ethically it's going to be, the optics are not going to be good for doing something like that for a long time. I just think it's, it's just not going to be accept. It's just going to look weird. And even if it's distance and it's outdoors, it's, there's still like, there's still issues with it. Financially work. 
Yeah, and I just, I so I don't, I don't know. I mean, shit, they just delayed the Oxford trials. Like, I, I, I thought that we, like, I felt like last week was like kind of good COVID week news, but like, yeah. I, I just, re- I really don't know where we're at now. I, I felt like next summer was going to start to be rational as far as touring goes, and and like at least some kind of hybrid shows or limited capacity shows, but I just don't know anymore. Yeah, you know, they just announced. Um in Orlando that they're going to open bars up at 50%. So I'm not sure what that, that will mean. Because that is there was... <laughs> so fucking psych. It's just like, if we would have locked this shit down for two, two months, we, we would be like in a completely different spot. Like, well, the problem is, is, um, you know, we have this terrible governor, uh, DeSantis, yeah. Yeah. and he won't help any of these businesses. So yeah. that's his solution is to open it up and, you know, let them fend for themselves. But there was an issue. There was several issues with people getting infected, and that's why they were all shut down immediately after they just reopened. And, so, and Orlando is a traveling hub. It just like it just yeah. defies like if yeah. you just like look at this as a mathematician, it just defies logic to do stuff right, like that. Right, and you don't have to quarantine anymore when you when you travel. Um, yeah, which is again like psycho. Yeah, it's it's all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some boring, tedious, 900-page books about all the shit America did in 2020, man. I know. Yeah, and I'm not going to read one one of those pieces of shit. I don't want to be reminded. <laughs> Why do you need to read it? You lived it. You know? I lived it. You're going to be telling your grandkids, back in my day. <gasps> oh, they'll be, they'll be like in the it, – it'll be Bla- – again, it's going to be Blade Runner 2049. They're going to be like, <sighs> like, yeah, you were just – you created this fucking hellscape. Yeah. Grandpa. Oh my God, um, how's our donations going? Are we getting moolah? Uh, Adrian's gonna chime in here. Oh, we got a shout out to Adrian too. She she's on the back end here, like giving us uh, cues, information. With we're about very... nine hundred bunks, bucks. Oh, bunks. Adrian, thank yeah. We're we're at nine hundred bunk beds, which is pump it up. I agree, Kevin. We gotta pump this pump. shit up. Let's get this. <laughs> what can we fucking do? Play another tune, uh, Tierney, because maybe we're talking too much and and it's too much me and. And that's um, not what the people want. Well, okay. Well, speaking of you, this is actually a song I wrote about you. <laughs> um, praise, so praise, praise. I'll give it a brief explanation again. I'll, I'll VH1 it. Um, it's it, ugh, it, how do you how do you wrap this up? Um, so, John, I've known you for like eight or nine years, maybe. I yes. Think we met uh, when. Classes opened up for you at this terrible little hole in the wall where, um, do you remember McCraney's? Yes, I remember that. And I remember you pulled me aside and you were like, hey, let me promote a show next time you come to Orlando (laughs) because it'll be a lot better than this. I was like, okay, cool. I, I, and it was. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed because I was like, we were so excited to meet you and to play with you. And like, you got there and the TVs were playing like, games like multiple yeah. tvs and there was a pool yeah. table right next to you and then like <laughs> poor sound guy but he was like soldering together a mic stand for you yeah <laughs> it was yeah. just like tell like everything that could go wrong went wrong so yeah you sure. you were just like you handled it well um and we met and we met rochelle too who's yeah really watching yeah. um it was and great she was so sweet and we just had such a great time but uh, during the show you were just like you know what fuck this like let's all go outside and let's just do this acoustic and then we all sat outside and it was just that was so, so much, much fucking fun and it was so much fun and we had a was great. party and it was just like yep. it was so great so so that's when i met you and i think i've always come to visit you every time i'm in san francisco yep. or in la you know hopefully in the future but Every time I'm there, I always try to go visit you at Tiny and just like catch up with you. And and during this time, you've just given me so much life advice, <laughs> so many things that have been so like valuable to me. And um, you know, I I think it's no secret that I I think you're the best. I, I admire you so much, and you're just like you know musical genius and just also the sweetest person ever. But you like you just keep it real and you just say how you feel and you don't let like outside perspectives like you know change your opinion on things and you just like I just appreciate you so much and all the advice you've given me and um and your music like I just I just hold you up so high and uh 
Yeah. So you're the best. So, so you came. Uh, this is a very long explanation. You came. I love it. Oh, our... Keep it going. I love it. <laughs> keep it going. More me. More me. Uh, you came and you played our house last year in Orlando in yeah. September. Unfucking you... believable. It was so, so much great. fun. And you stayed for a couple of days, and we just had like such a great time. We went to the beach, and it was I took you to all my spots. And yep. Um, I just felt like we had this great one-on-one -on -one time with each other, where I got to like, it just felt like full access to someone you know that like has this experience, um, which is something that I really value, especially when the person is a good person, because there's no formal training with any of this stuff. I know. You know? I know. So it was really special for me to be able to connect with you. And I just like wrote this song right after you left and hell yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So, um, it's called song for my mentor. And, uh, I, I want you to hear the, the demo version eventually. Cause my, my, my bandmate wrote some, yeah, love Jason. he wrote some JV esque fun stuff to go on top of it. <laughs> That's awesome. They just put in the chat that they got the video. They're going to play the video of me playing and us probably playing together at McCraney's oh, after, no, after no, this no, whole no. thing. Yeah, no, that'll be great. No, we got no, you. no. It's, it's, yeah, listen, it's re it's, if it happened, it's tr true. It's a, ew, okay. <laughs> anyway, so this, is, I, I realize this is a lot of pressure to do this right now, but I asked you uh, beforehand and you were up for it. And uh, yeah, then you don't have to like it. Oh, I'm yes. gonna like it. <laughs> it's uh, it's just for you. Oh, 
Oh. I did tell you not to date any musicians. You did. Yeah. Right. I didn't listen. I didn't listen. Cause we, we, well, we talked about a bunch of psycho men when I was there. <laughs> Yes, but then you told me that, and then I dated a scientist, and that didn't go well. So maybe well, I'll go back to music. I think I think it, it feels unfair to say not to date it because there's so many people that we know are musicians. So I think that I, I, I think there's no rhyme or reason to who you're drawn to, and I think it's all good as long as you can. We we can both navigate into something that's hel the healthiest version of what yeah. it's going to be, and that's it all we can do. It depends on the person. Um, it was it's a good line. <laughs> it's a, it's the song is awesome and it is always going to feel like we're on the mend don't you feel that way like touring does that to you like you never get your balance but you know what i mean you get home you're just planning to go out again it yes. just kind of fucks with your head yes yeah totally i mean i feel like i i mean I, i'm sure a lot of people are like this but like how to like calibrate you know all right or how to compartmentalize like i'm going on tour now this is what I'm doing. And then I come home and then I, what do I do? And I, you know, yeah. like going, I'm a domestic person. Uh, then I'm not a domestic person. I'm living in a car or like someone's couch or whatever. It's like so many extremes that you have to somehow balance. And, <clears throat> yeah, and I think it's the pacing too. Like someone asked me like why so many musicians have like substance problems. And I think that, a lot of it is that when you like the pacing gets really fucked up, right? You get used to this, like you're walking on a moving sidewalk and then mm -hmm. it stops. And that's yeah. the feeling when you get home. Like, it's yeah. like everything is half speed. It's not that it's like, it is a little bit like the end of Goodfellas where he's like, I'm just another schmuck. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you do get used to like, like you don't like exactly get like brought to that front table, but when you're on tour, man, like, people are nice to you. You know what I mean? They, they see you as like a traveling entertainer and they, they yeah. kind of like guess that there's like certain sacrifices that are made. You're a novelty and you're only there for 24 hours or eight hours. And it kind of heightens every relationship, yep. every interaction. And you get addicted to that, that fucking adrenaline. And then when you get totally. home, you, if your friends don't, your friends just know you. It's like, you're not really special. You shouldn't be special. You're just another schmuck. And like, and so that kind of can get really jarring because you're ping ponging back and forth between these like poles, goes, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, but the great thing about it too, is there's like kind of an escape, you know, it's like, all right, well, if this person's crazy, I can get out of here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. This club, you know, whatever. Like, and you get addicted to that. That's why like yeah. when you're at McCraney's, I was like, this is all good. You're just Zen because it's like, you're, the van is going to be leaving there at 9 a.m. tomorrow, right. regardless of what happens. You know what right. I mean? Like, I can put up you, with this. Yeah, you, you, you just you have to become like more zen about everything because it's like all yeah. transitional, you know? Yeah, totally. Do you, um, do you miss the touring? Do you, are you like? I, I do. I really miss touring. I miss it because I was, I have, like, I have a lot of friends in LA, but I have a lot of friends out there. Like when I go to Orlando, I see you, I see your roommates. I get to yeah. hang out with you. Then I go to Tampa and I have friends there. Then I go to like Tallahassee and I have friends. Like, so I have this like really beautiful connectivity with like longtime friends of mine. And that's the only time I see them. Yeah. And so it becomes like a really special, um, and very and highly socialized thing when I tour and I almost only play house shows which are very very intense for me they're super intimate and like you get addicted to that feeling and I don't know I mean I I need I need it I mean I kind of went crazy without it I mean that's why I'm doing that insta thing because I just yeah I need to have the this simulation that I'm like performing you know that's what I wanted to ask you about like because I, I haven't played a show since oof, probably December um so it was that's why I'm like extra extra nervous because I yeah. like, I haven't been accustomed to that you know like just pa and I don't really panic before our shows you know it's obviously different when you have a band so you kind of like you know the attention is not all on just one person but yeah um I haven't had this feeling in a really long time and I wonder like how does this um, compare to, like, do you have any, like, pre-show ritual? Um, is it any different than getting ready for, like, a regular show versus your ID show? Like, it's, it's wild. It's the same for me. I get, like, really, especially for the Friday show when I'm playing two hours of 
just like because the Wednesday show I do is like a call-in show the doctor's in and so it's like there's just like yeah. you know I have tons of people call in and, and like yeah. so there's so like fun it's really fun like and yeah. it's like and and so that has like a, a little bit more of like a open flow to it but the Friday show where it's just me mostly me playing for two hours I try to learn one or two new songs every Friday so there's a built-in I think terror in trying to fill up that much time. And I try to do different versions of songs. I try to do improvisation. I try to do keyboards, guitar, drum machine. And I try to be like on the edge of what I'm capable of doing. And I, I get really nervous for those shows. I think it's a good panic, you know, like I felt crazy today. Cause I was like, well, for one, you know, it's like, I'm in the venue all day. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'm staring at the stage all day because I'm like extra anxiety um, yeah. and uh, like it's it's just like I don't know like the countdown I'm like <clears throat> fucking freaking out like this is gonna be so crazy but I know there's no one it, it just feels like it's just you and me in a way <laughs> I know and and that's how of course you have you you can survive when you're c completely freaking out is is you you and it's really hard to do it but you have to like shut out the outside world because you'll 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 get into it you'll get into an echo chamber but the one thing i will say about it when you're off tour and you don't play when you just dabble back into i remember once i was off tour for like i stopped touring and it was like a year and a half and someone asked me to play um a sh one song at the swedish american it was their birthday and it was like a sold out show at Swedish. And it was, I would just went up and played one song, super simple. And because I hadn't played in two years, it's like, I've never felt more terror because you yeah. simply, that you, you simply aren't used to firing those like terror neurons anymore. And it's like yeah. overwhelming. So I, like, I, like, I bet if you were in the middle of tour and you did this, you wouldn't be nervous at all. You know, that's, that's kind of this, I can relate this feeling to when I did like hired gun stuff, you know, and like, I was representing someone else um, yeah. and not in a place of like, like muscle memory of something I wrote myself, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Or if I, if I screw this up, it's okay. Cause I wrote, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. really play around with things too much. And I, I think as a band that we, we do like to do that. We we're kind of, we, I guess we get bored easily. We yes, <laughs> we'll yeah. uh, mess around with things and that's kind of fun for me. So when you're kind of regimented to this like thing, you have to represent someone with it's like it's scary but yes um, but it, it's a good panic because i and I, that's why i like doing those types of gigs because it kind of gets me out of my comfort zone or i'll learn a different style of music uh, yep. or get to play a different style of music that i don't normally get to do so um i, I can really relate to that panic yeah totally <laughs> but, agree. i mean i bet if i did this more which i don't know that i will um it would probably be easier but yeah i don't know you get used to it yeah and maybe we'll have to get used to this for the rest of our lives. Like, I, I used to wonder how, like, Donald Rumsfeld could, like, kill so many people or Paul Wolfowitz. And I just think that they they were used to doing it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like I think it's like, like, if you, <laughs> like, like, when Obama was droning six countries at once, I was like, he seems like a decent person. Like, how could he, do, <laughs> how could he do this? And so it's like, oh, he's just used to, like, killing people. You know what yeah. I mean? That's what you do when you're the president yeah. of the U.S. So... Yeah, that's, I don't know. that's I don't know apparently what the what's happening. That that's what's, what's happening, happening now. Yeah. Yep. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> I agree. Um, how's our donations? Are we? Uh... Yeah, Adrian. What, what are we up to? Like four million. And thirty-five what, million. That would be sick. We're probably around nine hundred, but I, I, we're going to get it. Oh, five five, we're at five million. Woo! Thank you, Adrian. That's great. <laughs> that's just what. Our, <laughs> That's what our frail egos needed. It was a Have fake you... number. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, well, we need we're everyone to contribute anything they can. A dollar, I think, is that the minimum? Yes, let's we say it to, is. We need to get to at least a thousand dollars. We're gonna get it. The the night is young. We're gonna get it. Yeah. Right there. Um, have you been watching anything that you like? I. Yeah, I went. I've been on this like Robert Altman tear. I watched um, a documentary about him, and then I just went like crazy, like okay. Long Goodbye, like all the er all, all the early stuff, Mash, McCabe, and Miss Miller, 
um, all really all the seventies stuff, three women. I mean, this is like in the past two, two weeks. Um, and it was, it was California split was great. I think that, that just came, I think that's on, um, prime right now and, okay. and Juan good buys it. And the, they're, they're just such funny, strange and like very fresh feeling movies. So they're, they're, you know, Altman was fascinating because he, he was constantly experimenting with like miking techniques. So his, the goal, like in, in California split, he said that his goal was to have competing conversations and Howard Hawks did this, but, but like Altman really pushed it to another level. And then of course, like, like, like PT Anderson is like the next step beyond this. But um, Altman's idea was that you would be like watching a conversation. Let's, let's, let's say it's a shot of like a bar and there's like, there's like two competing sets of conversation. He would mix them at the exact same level. So you as the viewer would have to choose what you're engaged with. Oh. And like, of course, people found that like very irritating in 1974, but mm -hmm. it's fascinating to watch this movie where the dialogue, people are stepping over each other's dialogue, the entire film, this, it sounds like no other movie and it's shot beautifully, but it's, it feels like a very, very modern film because of that. And it's 40 years old. It's crazy. So what's it called? It's called California Split and it's I'm really, gonna, really good. I'm going to add it to my watch list. Yeah, you you will you will love it. So I'm I'm kind of crazy about Altman right now, but I my screen. I mean, I'm a uh, I'm a crazy basketball fan, so I I try I watch a little bit of basketball, but in general, I don't I don't have much screen time. I try to stay off screens as much as I can. Yeah. And I'm I feel oddly busy, which is strange. I feel busier than I was before COVID. So yeah. I'm good. I'm kind of like trying to just stay in working mode. So. I'm kind of the opposite. I like a lot of um, decompression time and like yeah. zone out time. And uh, I always feel like I get inspiration from films and yes, especially, yeah. especially documentaries. I, I always like end up watching some rock doc, you know, because I feel like, again, it's like you can learn from someone's situation like, yeah, you know, or experience but or whatever. But um, yeah, I've been watching so much stuff. I actually yeah, made so a list. What's one thing, tell us one thing that you like right now that you're really obsessed with or like really got to you. Well, I, um, I just finished this series called I May Destroy You. Yeah. And yeah. it's on HBO. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Like, yeah. It's like um, sexual assault in like a really told in a really unique way. And like, I don't want to give away the ending, but yeah. there's like a really good resolve. And yeah. it just makes you, it makes you feel uncomfortable, but it like, you know, hits on some issues that I think are important. Um, yeah. And she's, a, uh, I think her name is Michaela Cole, Cole, I don't, I don't want to butcher it, but she's gorgeous and she's amazing in it. And uh, she's super funny. So I don't know. I would, I, I thought it was great. I agree. It's killer. I would highly recommend that too. I think yeah. it's amazing. And then uh, well, I, I just rewatched all of Curb again. That's great. I that's happy. That's happy Larry shit, David. right? Yeah. Yes, it's something and that's I happiness. Can throw on in the background, you know, yeah. and like I don't need to like tune in and like yeah. examine everything he's yes. saying. But yeah, I just feel this spiritual connection with him because he yeah. just says what everyone's thinking. Yeah. And this last season, it was so wrong, like in the best yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His, his spite store season. And I, oh, I find yeah. him like deeply ethical person. Like, I just think he's like yeah. incredibly democratic and, and well, like honest. And like, I just don't really find him at fault like very often, so. Well, I think, you know, obviously he knows what's right and what's wrong. You know, he's not addressing these issues within the <laughs> yeah. show just blindly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. He yeah. knows, <laughs> he's pushing the, the issues so yeah. you can see why this is bad. <laughs> You know? Yep. Like wearing the MAGA hat, you know, like trying to get out of uh, a lunch is like the best thing I've it's ever seen. It's the best seen. thing. It's the best <laughs> thing I've ever seen. And you know what's wild is that like before, um, before um, the, the, the in the first like season or so, they haven't they hadn't really modulated who he was yet, and he's yeah. like vicious. There's a couple episodes where he's actually unbelievably mean, like he's over the line mean and it doesn't work. And you just feel that they like got in the writer's room and they were like, this is, we got to recalibrate this character. Totally. We got to bring it back. 
I like when he's mean to Richard Lewis, though. It seems like a a, a genuine meanness. That's great. <laughs> Tierney, I think we're killing the schedule now. So we, okay. I want you to play a song, and then, uh, and then I'm, I'm gonna. That's all I got. So I think oh, you should go. You're the you're the fucking bomb. You're the best. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. I wanted uh, to now end I'm it. nervous. Oh no! Don't get nervous. Oh yeah, but of course I'm gonna be nervous. Okay, so um, Tierney, yes. this is everyone. Tierney Tough from the pauses, the fucking best. Thank you for uh, having when, me. And I'm gonna see you soon. Like, the, listen, COVID shit will, it, 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 this, it, it's nothing's forever. This stuff's gonna end. We're going to uh, have an incredible, I think we're gonna have an incredible resurgence when all this stuff is over. Um, and then I'm going to play some songs. I wanna uh, shout out uh, everyone at Noise Pop again. And Sierra Nevada is the, uh, they are the, like, uh, first off, I'm gonna get some, like hella Sierra Nevada out of this, which I'm really excited about. Um, and they are a sponsor. So thanks to them for making this happen. And thanks to everyone who's put in some, uh, some moolah. All right, I'm going to go off uh, my earpiece, everyone, just so you know, and I'm going to play some music. Okay, are we good? Andrew, I fucked you up. I'm sorry. Tell me if we're good. Did I unmute? I'm good. Cool, you got me? Sorry, that's my bad. Swiss scales with point zero zero. I did it. One details. Stationary drones controlled by rotary phones. Night sky. Powdered light, rock steady, steady rhymes when stars collide. I looked underneath, under, I looked underneath covers. I pulled back and then pulled back. I pulled back and then pulled back. I looked underneath. Stuff. 
oral history of Silk Road. Remember when they nabbed Ross Ulbrich from, uh, they snatched him up at uh, Glen Park Library. He was the uh, operator of Silk Road 1. Let me just say that when you, um, oh, Daniel says it was in the Burna Library. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I love it. I'm going to rewrite that song. Uh, Ross Ulbrich gave an interview to Forbes where he dared he basically baited the FBI saying that they couldn't find him. And then like within a month, he was a uh, zip tied to a uh, library chair. It's not how you, and he's still in jail. It's from a split I did with the mountain goats called Moon Collie Bloodbath. In the desert in the last light of day We search for the footprints of Bobby Beausoleil Out in the desert past the Yale County line Bobby buried the canister in the middle of the night I'm not alright, I'm not alright, I'm really not up for the fight. Slow it down, slow it down, 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 slow it down, slow it down, down, down. down. The gears grind on as the van accelerates Some things buried deep need to stay that way I'm not alright, I'm not alright I'm really not up for the fight Slow it down, slow it down, 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 slow it down, slow it down, down, down.
the end of the southern line and lost most of my friends. I've never been lonelier. I've never been lonelier. And a bird flew in my house one day and he, he panicked and thrashed up against the window glass. He crashed and crashed. I've never been lonelier, I've never been lonelier, I've never been lonelier. And the boy recoiled as he got out of the heated pool. It was midnight. I've never been lonelier, I've never been lonelier. You left me at the table to go to the ATM. Pack the cord, I wrap the cords right, clean the cupboards, bit after it ends. Strike the cleat lights, cut the phone lines, kick out the fire door. But leave the banner, leave the banner, leave the banner there. Leave the banner, leave the banner, leave the banner there. After it ends Moment of silence All we left behind in California After it ends I'm so hungry Like I was just born I'm still aching for life So leave the banner, leave the banner, leave the banner there. Leave 
the banner, leave the banner, leave the banner there. Leave the banner, leave the banner, leave the banner there. That song was dedicated to Tierney Tough. Booyah. Uh, hey, y'all, if you have any questions for me or Tierney, send them in and we will, um, an- there'll be a Q&A time uh, after this and we will answer questions. is in Colombia hunting down the rebels over fields of bright and shiny coca over the jungle floor one handing a 32 he says bring her down low now I'm ready I hunt kids in camouflage Rain down bullets in flight White light barefoot boys Run for your lives And you can be nice You put your gun under the head And you roll back the pin oh, oh, oh. After song, it's a cavalcade of entertainment. No place like home, presented by Noise Pop, Sierra Nevada. Again, a shout out to all the uh, people that helped Tierney and I make this happen. I definitely complicated everything because my cat kicked over my uh, MacBook, which could have run <laughs> the shit. <laughs> of course, Daniel, Daniel, Scott, Andrew, Adrian, Kevin. Oh yeah, well I'll get my I'll get my cats on the on the screen. It's just oh yeah, my cat on soundcheck. My cat was here. Um, I'm sure that's what everyone really wants to see. Uh, I'm gonna play a song from the Cedars. Actually, listen, tuning is overrated until you got a fucking tune. Then you got a tune. Uh, this is a benefit for the lost church. This is uh, targeted 
show because Lost Church means a lot to me. Why do I have my volume up to two? This is like, it's not Grateful Dead in uh, the, uh, you know, Pitzker Stadium in upstate New York, right? 1972, before they had like bypass tuners. That's a real fuck you to the audience when you tune with your volume up. Okay. Oh, I'm getting, uh, keep the, the, the notes coming in. I'm pretty good at reading them while I'm playing, but sometimes they get chopped off on Zoom. How is it, isn't Zoom like a, like a PSYOPs thing? Like how is this legal? Isn't it? Remember when TikTok, when they, when that dude reverse engineered TikTok and they were like, yeah, this is like, this is like spyware. I'm like, bring it on. Sure. Like what? What else you got? Twenty twenty. You think spyware's got me? Oh, we've got some back channel discussions about uh, donations. I'm gonna play a tune from the Cedars. This is called "I'll Wait for You." Lazy ass title because I say it ninety times in the in the uh, song. Um, I'm working on a new record. That's why I'm going. I'm going to driving to Oakland tomorrow to work with Jamie Riado and Rob Shelton in Tiny Telephone. I'm fucking pumped. I got seven more days, then four more days, and that thing is finished, and it's going to be very weird, weird and abstract. abstract. And, and this, this is, is from the first record that I made with Jamie and Rob called The Cedars two years ago. Actually, last, last year. year. Jesus Christ. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. Nothing you can't get through I'll wait for you I'll wait for you Just stay strong, stay true It's a miracle I'm not a drug addict It's a shame I'm still hard Sure to you. I got you into this, and I I can't get you out of this. I'm always gonna use. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. Don't bring home that 12-step shit, I'll sink that ship, what else can I do? On the edge of bankruptcy, on the fringes of legality, that's where I'll Miracle, I'm not a drug addict, but you know me, I'm still hard at it, but damn it sure took you. I loved you, it's true, but there's a big part of me I stashed away from you. I'm going to play this song. This is Exodus Damage, and my favorite podcast, True Non, put this on their podcast yesterday. I was like, fuck yeah. If you haven't, if you haven't listened to True Non, it is fucking wild. It's really, it's the only non-pedophile podcast on the internet, as that's what they claim. Um, they were obsessed initially with the Epstein-Ghislaine 
uh, shit that was going on. And now they're just, it's just a super, super left wing. They're kind of like Marxist, radical. I don't know what they are. They're fucking brilliant. I love them. I, I highly recommend True Non. Yeah, I think we got some questions. Let me look at the chat on my phone. Do, 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 do. Do we have questions? Oh, shit. Okay. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll do all the questions at the end. This is Exodus. Damn it, that sounds like really not the yeah. There we go. I'll see you next fall. At another gun show I'll call the day Before like usual But I I wanted so much more I got exodus damage bleed Could not commit Some things I'll never be So now we're talking about this I'm starting to lose my confidence and no one ever says a word about so much that happens in the world dance dance revolution all we're gonna get unless it falls apart i say go Second plane hit at 902. Saw it live on a hotel TV, talking on my cell with you. And you said this would happen just like that. It did. Wrong about the feeling, wrong about the sound, but right to say we would stand down and hour went by without a fight in the sky you said there's a reason why so tell me now i must confess i'm not i'm not sick enough to guess dance dance revolution all we're gonna get unless it falls apart I say go 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 down let it fall down I'm ready for the end That dream is a sad delusion And sometimes It's true So now we're talking about this I'm starting to lose my confidence And no one ever says a word about So much that happens in the world All we're gonna get Unless it falls apart I say go, 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 go down Let
let it fall down I'm ready for the end Exodus Damage from Pixel Revolt, which is just about to be reissued. Double 45 vinyl, uh, remastered by Bernie Grunman from the Half Inch Tapes. Maybe this fall, maybe next spring. You never know. With, with COVID times, schedules get fucked up. Is everyone happy in the world, on this chat, in my immediate surroundings? This is how the West is won. Hand that cut this barley, I'd like to know. The pale blue lips that blew the life into this stereo. Oh, oh, oh I'd like to know. Oh, 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 I'd like to know Oh, don't it feel good To be understood West was one. It wasn't pretty. Just more American war crimes. Nothing to see here, folks. Just 
Keep moving on. If there's anything I need to know, I'm going to check the time. I think. Do do. Oh, it's eight thirty. Good. We're 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 doing good. Um, probably around like nine ish. I will stop and I'll take questions. Tell me if that. Uh, you can chime in here if that works for everyone. On the chat here, and um, and then I'll we'll take questions, Tyrion and I, and then I'll I'll play. Uh, cool. Good. It's good. Then I'll play one tune to get us out of here. Okay. How are we How gonna, gonna do this? Let's, Let's play, play a song about a missing thing. bunny rabbit. It's called Angela, also from Pixel Revolt. Angela, don't be mad. There's something I gotta tell you, dear. Before you come back here I lost, I lost your bunny I let him out of the cage He was eating spring mix on the carpet Jumped through a window out into the haze Hop down Magnolia Boulevard No way he'll survive Maybe those last days of freedom the best of his life Oh, I got lucky there, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Angela No, you don't mean that, dear Take it as a sign all your hopes and dreams were placed in some dead rabbit sheen. Angela, we searched until dawn. Last time I saw him, he was lovingly crossing the Henderson's front lawn and then hopped down Magnolia Boulevard. No way he'll survive. Those last days of freedom are the best of his life. Rabbit's ears. And what do we have left here, anyways? Banned in warehouse teens. Mean art kids and half hearted openings and synthesized bullshit are dreams. Let's leave Magnolia Boulevard. It's the only way we'll survive. Get some land out in the
We push the horses as long as we could Over Coulee Pass into Sierra Woods Burn the wagon wheels for here For fun we got down Timothy Gannon died so 12 could make it through time to go time to go go time to go time to go 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 time to go time to go go time to go time to go 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 Never come back, it's time to go. Try to make it to the shore, it's time to go. Don't know what you had till it's time to go. In Bakersfield, we found a plan, community. Bedrooms and full amenities. All the horses we sold are gone. A specter of Timothy can appear on my lawn. Told me to run. Time to go. Time to go. Go. Time to go. Time to go. 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 Time to go, time to go, go. Time to go, time to go, go, go. We'll never come back, it's time to go. Been banished to the cracks of molten What you had till it's time to go. You know it. Jamie, Jamie. We're living in the Black Lodge for the time being. We'll learn to withstand and accept all we've been given. Jamie, Jamie, I reject the idea that this is only a simulation Cause I once cut my hand real bad Working at the salad station And it was real blood All over the cutting board And it was real pain It was all I could afford it was real flesh that we had to learn to endure. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. That was a song for Jamie. Woo! Set, uh, a song I wrote for a Patreon person named Jamie's yeah. Awesome. And uh, it's on an EP I, I put out a week ago, two weeks ago, called Eep, seven E's and one P. 
and one exclamation mark because that's the sound you make in your brain when you realize like oh shelter in place and this covid shit it's not like the summer it's not like the summer and the fall it's like it's like this unknowable fucking arctic landscape in front of you and that's the sound you make to yourself eep <laughs> um i put up a patreon recently and i totally fucked up because on the highest tier it's fifty dollars a month, which actually it's a lot of money. Like I would not give any fucking person fifty dollars a month, like, personally. But like that's a lot of money, right? So I was like, I got to make this good. So I decided I would write a song for everyone that signed up on the fifty dollar tier. First off, everyone games the system. It's fine. I'm I, I listen, I'm a fucking scam. I'm on Medi-Cal and EBT. I'm scamming everything night and day. Like how else are you gonna survive? How, how do you think you you get these pink shirts? You know, if you're not if you're not scamming. <laughs> um, and so, I there was like 26 people that signed up. First off, that's fucking hard. To, like that's one of the tunes. It took me like a month to write that song and then record it. Because you know, of course, I'm gonna like put some sense and some weird shit on it and make it interesting. Um, and so then <laughs> I noticed that like like once I wrote a song, this is like this guy. Listen, no he's awesome. He's cool as fuck. So it's no, no problem. But like the month that I delivered the tune, it was like, he was down to five bucks and I was like, fuck, this is tough. This is, uh, I played myself is really what I want to say. But you know what? It's just the, you got to play to win, right? California state lottery. It's my life. Uh, that's 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 the mentorship that I can that I can provide. <laughs> I agree. It's cold. From the haunts of daily life Where is waged the daily strife Common wants and common cares Cuts the human heart with tears Rise like lions after a slumber And in greatly unknowable Let the tyrants pour around with apocalyptic sound On the charge of iron wheels and the crash of horses' heels Rise like lions after a slumber and in greatly unknowable numbers Free the blood that must ensue John, now let them see, standing tall to say they're free. Your strong and simple words, set to wound to sharpen swords. White as targets, let them be, with their shade to cover me. Rise like lions, after us number and in greatly unknowable numbers. Free the blood that must ensue. We are many and they are few Damn it, this might be my favorite delay setting I've ever fucking heard in my life. This is a, an Ibanez AD202, probably designed for the worst people in mind. Like, total guitar center vibe. But when you misuse it, first off, listen to how fucking good this thing sounds. It's 
it's too much. I love it. Um, I wrote that song because I wanted to kill George W. Bush. Uh, wait, listen, fuck this painting shit. Fuck this new, like, grandpa, like, outsider folk art painting guy. This guy's a fucking war criminal. They should all be all, they should all, so don't, like, don't, don't buy, don't buy it. <laughs> so fuck this guy. But listen, what's crazy is that think of all the, like, I, like, I, I can't fire those neurons anymore to want to kill. It's just like, I, I'm just done. You, you, you just, I can't, I can't hate these people anymore. Think of how much energy, they, energy vampires, they just take it all, take it all, driven us crazy. Uh, let me check the time. I'm going to play a song called Kookaburra. Oh, it's 850. First off, this is fun. Okay. You're, this is, this is a noise pop production. Fucking love noise pop. I've been, I've played so countless noise pops. I got that poster where it's like a. You put put your they show you which ones you played. I was like, there was a couple I missed. I was pissed. It's like, what, what was I doing? Where was I? So I love noise pop. Uh, this we're this part of the No Place Like Home series. Next week is Tau. Is it next week or two weeks? Tau and the Get Down Stay Down. You're gonna see my guy Jason Sloda, who plays all over my records, and he's fucking awesome. Two weeks for Tau. Nine twenty four says Adrian. Nine twenty four. I love Tau. Love Tau. Tao and I go back. Fuck, I, I met Tao at a, uh, it was a noise pop thing. It was a noise pop function. Love Tao. Tao's, Tao's life. Tao is life. Tao has good people around her. I will say that consistently. This it is, is called, called Kookaburra. Kookaburra. It's, it's from, from Emerald, Emerald City. City. Lightning shot from the sky It breathed life into every Every living thing It made you, it made me It gave us the kookaburra, it gave us Japan tree from dusk to dawn and dawn to dusk the sky will fail with vaporized dust ringing white on white like streamers of dirty confetti on why the Chrysler Tower had disappeared. White on white, the Capitol Dome was invisible. On why the hoisted flag had disappeared. Thunder clouds are tightening in the sky tonight. It 
gave us the terabyte it gave us the 117 from dusk to dawn and dawn to dusk the sky will fail with vaporized dust raining white on white like streamers of dirty confetti on white the looming spire had disappeared White on white, the Bundestag was invisible. On white, the hoisted flag had disappeared. White phosphorine. And blackout bombs are falling out the sky tonight. We can't be saved. Electricity is crossing out your family name. Lightning shot from the sky It gave us the kookaburra It gave us Frangipan tree Someone just sent me a photo of a kookaburra yesterday Tierney, are you signaling me? Oh, you have a little bell. Oh, my God. Is that a kookaburra? Oh, my God. That's adorable. That's so fucking cool. Or is it a monkey? I can't see because my screen is dimmed because I don't want to run out of juice. Okay, I'm going to play one more song, and then we're going to interview you and your kookaburra. Whatever that adorable thing is. Do, 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 do. It's Alf. Okay, one more Alf. tune. And then Fun City. That was the beginning of the end for Ellen when she went to that baseball game. She's supposed to be a D Dakota Fanning's wedding. Remember that? This is like a this is what we have instead of like Greek myths. This is the kind of stuff that we're we got to do what we can with this stuff. That's all we got. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's moments where I listen to myself talk. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're really saying this shit? Oh hell yeah, hell yeah. Like what what what, what Pee Wee Herman do? First off, yeah, Pee Wee Herman was in a it's consensual. He was in a like a porno movie. That remember when he got canceled? He guy did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. This is a song called "I Got Shit to Lose," which I do. We all do. Okay, I can, I can do, do it. it. One, One more, more setting. setting. Can, can I find this stupid thing? Get yeah, done. done. Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah. Got, Got the, the right, right fill. fill. Here we go. Tell me how. Tell me how. Tell me how the world took you down. Tell me how. I'll do my best to give you some rest. I've been a terrible friend and I'm back here again. I'm back from the dead I was out of my out of my head do
I can't, I can't stop, stop the drum, drum machine, machine when I'm hitting that. Button. I was like, this is going to be a cool ending. I'm going to hit this thing, and then it's like, duh, duh, duh. Not happening. Okay, so shall we take questions? That's the thing. I'm going to go on my earpiece so I can hear what the fuck is happening. It's my fault that all this tech is messed up. It's my fault. I'm not going to blame it on my cat because I'm the one who put it on that ledge. Do, do, do. Okay, so I got my earpiece in. Oh, the que question is, do I have a favorite MK Ultra song? Um, I was in a, a band called MK Ultra, San Francisco, I think 1996. Oh, wait, sorry, say that one again. Andrew, Andrew's giving me some fucking wisdom. Unmute the phone. phone. Right, is that what you said? And then mute that. Andrew, tell me if I've pleased you with what I've done, because I'm just randomly hitting some shit. Um, I'm going to look at my Zoom chat. Oh, so unmute. Okay. So did, oh, oh, ah, Ron is pleased. Fuck yeah. Um, I uh, was in a band, 1996 to 1999. We had three or four fans, maybe six uh, on the, maybe the peak Saturday night play, bottom of the hill. Six people were there. That is fine. I mean, it is, it's, it's, there's a lot of good bands. I'm not worried about it. But I, so that band was just like, I compartmentalized it as like a failure, put it behind me. And there's probably like 20 people that like the band. Hey, that's a victory. We take it. So I just put up all those records on uh, Spotify. Don't, li don't listen to them. You, uh, well, I got a fake English accent on those first two records. It's like cringe-topia. But uh, Tierney, are you there? Can you hear this blather? Yeah. Can you oh hear me? yeah, tyranny. tyranny is here. Fuck yeah, I can hear you. I'm gonna go on just yeah, I got you. Hey, so, say something funny. So uh, let me just think of something funny. Um, well, I would say that I there are there's a, a song on the the last in culture song about a kid who he like crashes on a go kart and then this like lawns keeper gives him CPR and that's my favorite in culture song. <laughs> I can't even remember what it's called, but I just like, it's such a cool, weird melody. That's my, that's, that's my favorite MK Ultra song. Let's been, get I've these. I've been doing let's get, uh, sound effects for you the whole time. You have been? Yeah. <laughs> I, that's what I need. Tierney, how are you doing? Are you happy right now? Yeah, this has been great. Aren't Am you I... so happy that it's over? Like, there's something about when you play your songs, you're just like, it's like, the, there's like this dopamine drop. That's, that's what like, I said all day. I was like, oh, I just can't wait till it's over, you know? But, like, not I, in a bad way, but, like... No, in a good... I know what you mean, in a good way. But, like, oh, it's just so nerve-wracking, you know? It, it like, fuck... I mean, there's some about the, the, the no feedback thing, right? That you you don't yeah. have... Because there's, there is something comforting about... Even, like, these slack job like, audience members. Sometimes... Once I remember, I, I opened up for... For, um, for death... Death... Ca Okay, these are good. I like the questions coming in, by the way, and I'm 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 gonna answer all of them. But once I opened up for Death Cab for Cutie, and it was like a you know it was like a big for, I was just like a whatever an opener, but they was massive. It was sold out, and I remember that Ben was like really pissed because one person in the front was like on their phone, uh, and I at the time I didn't 
I didn't understand. Like, I thought like, oh shit, man, maybe he's like focusing on the wrong stuff. But, but I get it. Like you get so raw on tour. <laughs> like, yeah. But, but I miss that. I miss those irritating people yawning in the front or whatever, yeah. like the people that kind of take you off your game because that's better than like not looking at yourself on a screen, which is like, that's like only Jared Leto would get, get off on that. Like there's nothing good about that. Well, I went to see uh, Fiona Apple and she banned phones, which was kind of cool. You know, wow. like you weren't, you weren't allowed to, it wasn't that harsh, but you weren't allowed to pull out your phone, you know? Yeah. So no pictures and all that. So I thought that was cool. That I think it makes sense. And it's like, we don't, we need like unmediated like experiences. Right. Yeah. It, um, I, do, I do remember playing a show and my friend, I won't say his name, but he came and for some reason the spotlight was on him in uh -huh. the audience and he was turned to the side and he was just staring and yawning. <laughs> That's Damn. all I could look at the whole time. Damn. I was like, this is, yeah. I don't think gotta, he means that. Yeah, he doesn't mean <laughs> that, but you are, yeah. Okay. So we, we've got some good questions here. Oh yeah. Um, from Elisa, we've uh, uh, JB, tell us your favorite hair color you've had. So I have a new hair stylist um, named Leticia in LA, and she's like the, the jam. And I, my usual thing is if I have someone that I'm really happy with, and I, and I only had one person, um, this woman named Winona in San Francisco for, I don't know, for 15 years, I went to the same person. And my usual thing thing is I just say do whatever you want like whatever color you're inspired by so I went to Letitia like a couple maybe two months ago and she said let's do peach and then orange tips like red tips and that was my favorite hair color that I've ever had That's ever cool. Tierney what's your favorite hair color that you've ever had um well I have a similar situation I've had the same hairstylist for probably about 15 years now so I kind of just like let her do what she wants to do and i i'm always like more um fun i guess for her because i'm open to those yeah. types of colors but i did have yep. like bright pink uh last year which i loved and i'm not yes. naturally yeah. a blonde but i've been liking this color which is a little more subtle than normal but um yeah yeah i used to have black hair like i, I think yes. I had everything yeah i, re <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. and it, it is so fun there is a there is a a joyfulness to dyeing your hair that I, I just can't, I just, I think it's the fun. I think people see you as like more vulnerable and maybe if it's just because I'm a guy, like when they see, like people talk to me way more often if I have oh, dyed hair and yeah. people feel like I'm disarmed. Like I, that I just am just like a weirdo or that I'm like a target. Like, Oh, the dude yeah. in the pink shirt, he's got like, like a uh, peach hair. He can't, there's no way he's going to be rude or weird because this guy is going to get like, uh, pummeled if he's not you know what yeah. i mean if he's not like like it's, a sweet person like there's no way you know it's like a it's i mean for it's an unintentional attention grabber you know it's like i don't yeah. do this because i want you to come talk to me it's just like like this color or whatever but i had some when i did the pink which was pretty bright and i walk i walked a lot in my old neighborhood i yeah. had some some gross cat calls you know i was just like this is not what i wanted but yeah, um, I get that. I'm so sorry it, for it, guys. I'm guys are terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like, do you really think that's gonna work? You know. <laughs> uh, and I gotta say that it like, if you're a guy, you just don't have it. I like you just don't have experience with no. that. Like I just, you know what I mean? Like it's wild to think about that. Like that you just will not receive like attention that is that feels inappropriate. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Because if you dye your hair, you'll get like grandmas and stuff talking to you. Like you'll get yeah. people that just like want to chat. You know what I mean? Right. But if you're a guy, they don't have anything that they want from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Oh, it, I mean, it's, it happens. You just ignore it, you know? Yeah. But. Yep. Okay. So on with the questions. Oh, yeah. We're killing it on money. We're fucking yeah. killing. Hey, let's remember this is a, a benefit for the Lost Church. A very vulnerable. Listen, we're fucked, man. This COVID shit, it, it's not, it's not going to. They just, uh, they just paused the Oxford trial. That was our big hope. Uh, and 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 uh, there's going to be so much voter suppression. Listen, B Biden. If that guy took a bullet tomorrow, I wouldn't care. Who cares? But we're going to have to vote for this fucking clown. This like degenerate weirdo who has like declining cognitive abilities. Because Trump is a fucking nightmare fascist. Like we are in trouble. There's going to be so much voter suppression in the fall that I'm sorry. You're just going to have to bite the bullet and vote. Just vote, vote, vote. 
Vote. Uh, um, shout out to my parents uh, who donated and finally yeah. it finally happened. We were trying to figure it out during your set, but uh, yeah, thank you. Love it. Okay, so how does uh, how does San Francisco of today uh, now compare to San Francisco when I first came? So I moved to San Francisco in 1989, and um, it was you know I I I'm like remarkably unsentimental about like things and cities and places and people. I just think that it's I never got angry or bitter about the way that San Francisco changed because I just I just accept whatever's happening. Like cities are going to ebb and flow and there's going to be like, there's going to be, you know, economic reasons why they, 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 you know, they get fucking weird or there's going to be like cultural reasons. I, San Francisco was expensive in 1989. It was definitely not, it was a weirdo. It was an outpost. It was the gayest city in America. It was the, you know, there were thriving communist bookstores in, in Berkeley and San Francisco. Like it was, there was an anarchist movement. Like there were, it was definitely a more warehousey, fucked up, freewheeling town. There were actual naked people in the Castro. I lived in the Castro. It was fucking awesome. Like, I mean, I, you had a feeling of like you've moved to the the most interesting place at that time for me. Being in San Francisco was the weirdest. I mean, I grew up on the East Coast. It was like so fucking wild and free and beautiful, and I I loved it. But the the, the second that really that it was like two thousand. When that money, Peapod, all that shit, all the, the VC money started creeping up into San Francisco, I was like, this is untenable, man. You got a seven by seven grid here and you've got like NIMBY shit like for days. And so, at some point, Silicon Valley is going to come up here and start building. And like, so I knew it was going to happen. I just owned a business I didn't want to leave. And I, I, there's a lot of people I love in San Francisco. So I kind of stuck it out. I didn't blame anyone for leaving. And I, it just, it went the way it, listen, money is corrosive. And if, listen, if tech is coming to your town, get the fuck out right now. That's all I'm going to tell you. Um, what was it like using and making it music on Ableton for the first time? I loved Ableton so much. Um, Scott McDowell, I'm 100% digital. I'm like a total, like, we got to talk about this shit because like Scott was ahead of the curve. I am completely, I mean, we have tape machines, a tiny telephone, but I'm like 100% all fucking like random access. Like I don't, I really, I, I really was radicalized by working on a computer. The only studio I have in my house, I have like a two room garage, two car garage in my backyard. It's John Congleton's old studio. That's the only place I work at now other than when I'm recording a tiny telephone. Um, and it's all, it just has a computer in there. It had a tape deck and we sold it and it felt fucking great. Um, uh, Tierney, what are your thoughts about like, have you recorded on tape or done any linear recording at all in um, your life? We did some tape with, um, I think for both records with Jay Robbins. Yeah. Yep. At his studio at Magpie. I think it was like, yep. I'm, I'm so bad at this stuff. It was like two inch tape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think we did some, yeah, actually the last record we, recorded some drums and then re-recorded them onto tape to get this like watery sound yeah and i i'm butchering how you know the, the process but yeah, yeah we definitely definitely use some tape so that's awesome i love and we love jay robbins you shouted out a song to him and i yes. fucking love him great guy um and then brian feldman has a question um wow. could Hi, i get brian the brian we love you um uh, could I get the Pantone number for the, the color behind me? I think, <laughs> listen, so Brian, my email address is jv at tinytelephone, jv at tinytelephone.com. Send me an email. I need to make sure that this is Modern Mint. I think it is a bare color called Modern Mint. And then you could probably find an analog for like the Pantone name, but just send me an email and I, I got to look. It's down in the kind of this like uh, shed out in the backyard. I got this wild fucking backyard in LA. I live in historic Filipino town. It's very close to downtown. I got lucky with this rental. I mean, first off, yeah. it's like your like, house is beautiful. Just from it's, it's watching your sick. videos, it's, right? It's, it's nice. Is it two bedroom? It's three. It's three three. But the rooms are so oh, weird wow. and small that it's like it's not really a three three. You have three bathrooms. It's, yeah, but there's like only two of them work, and like oh, so one I was of them. Say like if you could use all of them. That would be so. It'd be, you'd be, it'd be incredible. like a king. I'd be, 
<laughs> I became, actually, one of them doesn't work. And then the, I, I just have like, like there's a shower curtain up. And if you pull the shower curtain, it's nothing but like boxes for like selling and reap and packaging gear. Cause I'm like selling uh, so much shit from, uh, from tiny telephone. Um, and so, but yeah, the, but the, having the space here, because I have people stay with me all the time. It's fucking incredible. Okay. Um, but in my backyard, there's like a, uh, baby skunks that now live there and they're they are so fucking cute oh. and they're so used to me being back there it's just like oh my god my mom just texted me um did you know he was born in Gainesville <laughs> yeah yeah I, I was I, I know what she's doing right now she's wikipediaing you that's awesome and isn't it great you're in Gainesville that Gainesville is my hometown Gainesville is the most important city for me for sure because I lived there off and on and was always returning there because my grandma lived there and like my that's where really the the family the, on that my mom's side the Baggett family that's where they were based was Gainesville. Yeah, so you were here recently, right? Has it had it changed a lot for you? God, I could not believe how fucking amazing it was when I was there yeah. in the fall. It felt like, like it felt like the coolest fucking town in America. It's a great town, and it's a really it's good food great. town. It's a great food town. Listen, food in Florida is very underrated in general. Yeah. I've never had a difficult time eating oh we got a cat alert here but keep keep talking but i've never um hold on i gotta get this cat up in here um i've never had anything Aww. but like an amazing like hey kevin said bring your pets on you gotta get those yes. donations up <laughs> and look if you donate money i will pet Aww. this cat look at that face first off i pet her like 12 hours a day she's <laughs> incredibly spoiled but just like with those paws like they've never been Aww. outside there's like this like furry little fluffy so like cute. fur that is just like you look come on are you kidding me <laughs> um but the uh gainesville felt so fucking cool and and hip and 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 i don't know it, it felt happy to me like and all the all that spanish moss everywhere there's so many trees it just felt like a really lucky place to be yeah, I really enjoy my walks every day because um, it really does feel like I'm walking through like a forest or something. There's, yeah. you know, there, there's no sidewalks. Um, the trees kind of like, it, it's like a t you're walking through a tree tunnel, you know, on these roads because there's just, there's just so much um, uh, foliage everywhere. You know, it's like, it's very, and we're in like kind of a dust bowl because it's just yeah. like, I don't know. It's just beautiful. I really, really I like think it's walking magic. the dog. Yeah, yeah, and all and the all the restaurants are open still too. Like, whoa, they're all, all doing takeout and outdoor seating, and and there's such like good coffee here. So, oh, I know. There's great fucking yeah. coffee. Yeah. Great ice. I mean, I ate so well when I was there last time. Yeah. Then I saw that recording studio that your friends own. It was oh, amazing. Yes. Yes. They were pulp, great. Pulp arts. Yeah. 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 Pulp arts were Steve. great. Steve. Yes really fantastic and and i i i just have like incredible oh i shout on the new record that i'm recording right now i shout out the gainesville mall in this song it's called Aww. working it out so that that's kind of like to me is special is that the oak mall oak um something oh i think gainesville mall is now closed oh, okay. but it, it was like it was like look at the like look how strange clover is right now i've like never ever seen her do this it's a good face it's a good face clover you're the best. You're going to go down. Okay. Let's check on questions. Um, once we know that we're good with questions, I'll play one more song and get us out of here again. Thanks for every, well, this is a benefit for, um, it's a benefit for the lost church, a super special venue. Um, cool. Good. And, and listen, thanks to everyone. Thanks Thank to Andrew. First, uh, Andrew, how far did Andrew go out of his way to make this shit happen for us? It's awesome. It's incredible. Thank you um, so and much. then and Scott, uh, killing it. Uh, Kevin, Adrian, Dan, everyone at Noise Pop. Thank you. We fucking love you guys. Tierney, I had the best time. You're the first person that I thought of asking. Um, That's so nice. Thank yeah, you so and, much for asking me. I, I, and, I'm really glad I did it. And remember, the, in the beginning, you were kind of like, I don't know, let me think about it. And I was like, please, you have to do this. Like, it's really <laughs> important. Oh, okay, don't I'm gonna get to uh, unmute your iPad. Oh yeah, I'm gonna unmute the iPad. Said. Yeah, I know. Isn't it? It's like you'd think that I didn't, <laughs> would understand a little um, bit of this stuff. Before you do, though, you're going to record a new album, right? Yes, I'm almost done with it. It's like it's we're 11 days away, so there's gonna be seven days starting on Saturday in Oakland, 
Um, and it's a really weird fucking ride. It's like way further out than Dollar Hits and Eep. Oh, wow. So, and it's, it's like, you know, cause I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like way deep into like dance music and electronica yes. and PC music, all that stuff. So I just really um, want to make like abstract music where the vocals are devalued. There's almost no performances. It's a lot of sequenced stuff. It's really a lot of cut and paste stuff. And it's, it's druggy as fuck, man. It's like That's drugged great. out to the, so I, I, I'm really stoked on the record and it'll be out in, um, in February. I think, or March. I mean, I'm not on a list. I mean, I just put out my own record. So I just put them out as fast as my publicist says I can put them out. So, yeah. you know, and shout out to Nick Solter. Fucking listen, and if you're an independent musician, you are, you are fucking merch people and your publicist, they're, they're your gods. So like fucking give it up and your booking agent. That's it. That's all you got. And your friends, right? Tierney, we're lucky. We have really good friends. I, and, I feel so lucky. And your bandmates are incredible. Yeah, I, I really do. I mean, I. what else can you ask for, you know? <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. Okay, did I unmute the uh, thing? I can't remember. Did I unmute this thing? Oh, do I? I okay, okay, so, so I, I just, just unmuted the iPad. That there is that smart? Go. Okay. All right, I'm going to come off this thing, and I'm going to play one more song. Tierney, I love you. You're the fucking best. Thank you to Noise Pop. Thanks to Lost Church. Okay, I pleased... Andrew, what what could be better? Uh, I'm going to play uh, a song called Transpaniel. I, um, oh yeah, Roan, you're the fucking best. Uh, so I was walking down Market Street uh, in two, I don't know, two th- mid 2000s, and I, uh, I was near the, um, I was near the Holiday Inn that it's on Mark. I don't know if it's still there, but I was walking by and I, it was like night. First off, it's kind of like a depressing block. Actually, it's like it's crazy, straight up depressing block. But I was walking and it was like really windy. And I just had this line hit me, cross the palisade. And I was like, okay, I got to use that, cross the palisade. And I was like, what the fuck is a palisade? I First off, I looked it up. I don't remember what it is. It's like some architectural feature, but... And then I and then I was like walking by and there's the Holiday Inn there and I was like, oh fuck, cross the pal- palisade at the Holiday Inn, and that's it. Those are the first two lines of the song. This song is about the invasion of Iraq. It's not about the Holiday Inn on Market Street, <laughs> but maybe it is. Okay. Thank you for We're watching. watching. Cross the palisade at the. Holiday Inn The Mujahideen barricades And just walk right through Past the bullhorns and Sleepy 47s Right by the coalition guards I'm in the back of the second floor basement I'll have my editor arrange for payment come to me now you are warming weather come to me now the kind that comes with sandbags along Where your me rivalis dotted on your pulse points a miraculous transformation my aching joints you are a vision in the air cheap lipstick bleached hair oh dress like that you are a flag of a dangerous nation Oh, dress just like that You are some kind of declaration Come to me now You are warming weather Come to me now The kind that 
comes with sandbags along the river. Here, cowboy bars and dance clubs don't exist. The trance manual says, just stand alone and then shift, then shift. Come to me now, you are warming weather. Come to me now, the kind that comes with sandbags alone. Peace. Good night, everyone. Thank you all. Tierney, love you. Woo! Love you. Thank you, Adrian. You were awesome. This is my this is my favorite part when everyone like 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 chimes in and says bye. Tierney, let's talk in the next week. Yes. I'll see you everyone soon. Take one.
Okay, so we're gonna come right down there and play a song with Jason and Tierney, and this is the surprise. So Tierney's question is quite relevant. How do you start this? And I have really like undermined your ability to know how to start this by refusing to give you. Any Let's just say we do this. I'll just pick it up. Like you know that. Okay. You know that I do. So you. The Holiday Inn The Mujahideen Barricades And just walk right through Past the Bullhorns and Sleepy 47s By the Coalition Guard I'm in the back of the second floor basement I'll have my editors arrange Come to me now, you are warming weather. Come to me now, the kind that comes with sandbags along the river. Wear your aquamirabilis dotted on your pulse points. A miraculous transformation My aching joints You are a vision in the air A cheap lipstick bleached hair Oh, dress like that You are a flag of a dangerous nation Oh, dress just like that You are some kind of Declaration Come to me now, you are warming weather. Come to me now, the kind that comes with sandbags along the river. Cowboy 
bars and dance clubs don't exist. The trans manual size just stand alone and then shift and shift. Come to me now, you are warming weather. Come to me now, the kind that comes with sand.